So now we're gonna get into what I think is the coolest integration piece with ACI, and that is the VMM, or the Virtual Machine Manager integration. So it ties in very nicely with virtual machine managers like vCenter, for instance, which is the one that we're gonna actually be using today. Um, we're gonna to see that it builds that distributed virtual switch within there. You guys have probably already listened to the theory portion of this, so let's um, kinda just get down and do it, right? I mean, let's, let's get her done. So what we're gonna do is we have, uh, or I have, a vCenter set up at 172, 16, 31, 31. I've got one ESXi host with three Ubuntu VMs on there. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and integrate the APIC controller um, with the virtual machine manager, okay? So we'll create a relationship Man, I keep tapping in the wrong screen, I'm sorry. We'll create a relationship with this guy here, build the distributed virtual switch, and then we'll basically attach these VMs um, through the DVS, okay? And we're gonna find that the port groups that we traditionally use within vCenter are now basically EPGs within ACI. Sounds confusing, but once we start to break it all down, you're gonna see it's really, really quite simple. So what we'll do first and foremost is we'll make sure that we can get into vCenter. So I'm using the web client personally. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to, actually, not admin. Uh, great. Hmm. Let's try the traditional. Try the traditional client. I may have to reboot this guy. That's why you always test it out first. It's loading this way. May just need to reboot it, but I'll, we'll, we'll do everything. We can do everything through the the traditional vSphere client. So we can see that we are able to get in. We see we've got some VMs in there. So the next thing that I typically do is I make sure I can ping that guy from the APIC. So I'm going to SSH to the APIC. So 172, 16, 31, 84. We will log in. Because if you don't have reachability, guess what? Yeah, <laughs> it won't work. So let's go ahead and ping 172, 16, 31, 31. And we, we are able to reach it. So that is pretty good news. So next we'll go ahead and stop that and we'll go to the APIC GUI. And we're gonna to go to this kind of un, undiscovered tab as of yet, which is VM networking. So within here, we're gonna build a VMware domain. So I'm gonna say, create a vCenter domain. And we're just gonna start propagating the information within here. So this, um, what do you wanna name the virtual switch again? What, um, <clears throat> what ACI is gonna do is it's gonna build a vSphere DVS within, um, or distributed virtual switch for the layman, um, within vCenter. So what do you want that thing named? I'm just gonna name this uh, ACI vSwitch, okay? It's gonna be a VMware DVS. For my AAP, I'm just gonna reuse the existing AAP. Again, you could create a separate one if you wanted. Um, I'm just gonna use that. And then remember that dynamic VLAN pool that we created. We're gonna use that. We're gonna dynamically, every time we create an EPG that we use within here, we're gonna dynamically pull a VLAN out of this pool. Um, security domains, we're not gonna worry about for now. Um, vCenter creds, this is pretty important. So our vCenter creds, we're just gonna call this creds1. Uh, username is going to be root, password is pretty tough, VMware, and we'll go ahead and click OK. Now that, that stuff pretty much speaks for itself, except it hates me. Don't hate, appreciate. 
Okay, there it goes. Uh, and then vCenter vShield. This is um, a fairly important part because this is, we're just going to vCenter. We're not doing anything with vShield, so we're just going to select the vCenter radio button. Um, and then the name. So we'll just call this vCenter ACI. Uh, he is at 172, 16, 31, 31. Um, DVS version. So I have like this, the ESXi host I have in vCenter is an older host. So I'm going to go ahead, instead of using 6.0, I'm going to use vCenter version 5.5. Um, because if I use 6.0, I'm not going to be able to move that host over um, to that guy. So uh, again, we'll just use 5.5. Um, we'll keep stats collection disabled. My data center name. So if we look back over here, my data center is actually named ACI. So that's what we need to propagate within here is the data center we're going to build the DVS in is going to be within ACI. Um, management EPG, we're not going to do anything under there. Associated credential was creds1. Okay. We'll scroll down a little bit. Um, port channel mode, we're just going to use Mac pinning. Okay, um, and again, the vSwitch policy. This is how we're going to basically pick up um, the, the different VMs that are on each ESXi host, how we're going to pick up the ESXi hosts. Uh, remember, we can't use LLDP with a lot of the older UCS manager versions, nor can we use it with the P81 VIC on the C-series C UCS servers. So we're just going to use um, CDP, and then firewall, we're just going to keep this disabled. Okay, so after we do this, we can go ahead and hit submit. And notice in the background uh, over here, let me lift this up a little bit. Oops. Come on. Notice in the background that it built a distributed virtual switch within here named ACI vSwitch. So that is the um, basically the integration through the VMware API. Uh, if we go over here now to inventory and networking, notice that there's a distributed virtual switch built in here now called ACI vSwitch. Okay, so it's got the just default port groups within there right now, uh, DVA uplinks and the quarantine VLAN. So uh, at this point, <clears throat> excuse me. At this point, we're really ready to come in and migrate some of our uplinks from our hosts over to this, this distributed virtual switch. So to do this, and actually before we do that, before we do that, let's, let's sure up our, our um, AAEP. Um, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself because if you remember, when we were over here at Fabric, Access Policies, and then our AAEP, remember the only thing we had referenced in here um, from an interface policy group standpoint was this 10 gig CDP LLDP interface policy. So we have the ports going down to our ESXi host are off 1.7. And 1.7, because it's a, a UCS server, is using that no LLDP policy. So we need to add that to this. Um, so we need to make sure that the, this AAP is actually referencing the, um, the other interface policy group, I should say. So what we're gonna do <clears throat> is go back under this interface policy, policy group, and this guy, and we're gonna add that to the AAEP. Okay, so we'll add that to the Army AAEP. Click Submit. Okay. Notice seven and eight were encompassed by that guy. So we'll say Submit Changes. And then what we'll do is we'll go back to the AAEP, and if we now look at Operational, we should see that no LLDP is now encompassed within there. So kind of one of those things we have to take two steps back before we can move forward again. So we need to make sure that that was in there. So now we can go to our um, vCenter. Sorry, been talking all day, starting to stumble words, like, like I'm a little bit drunk, right? Um, and we can migrate our host over. So what I'm going to do is just right click on this and say add host. 
All right. Um, I am not seeing my host. Let's see. View incompatible host. Oh, wow. This guy must be... This guy must be 5.5. .5. Let, me, let me go back over here. Or sorry, he must be 5.0. I was told that the... ESXi host was a little bit, whoops. Hopefully I can knock that back in here. We will see. Ah, can't do it. I just can't do it, Captain. I'm giving her all she's got. So it's telling me I need to delete that. So we'll delete that guy. Yeah, that's fine. And we'll put something else in. So we'll call this the center 172, 16, 31, 31, V center 5.1, ACI. Creds one, submit, and then we'll submit this again. And then we'll try it again. Okay, so I bet the DVS got deleted. Yep, got deleted and recreated. So now if we go to add a host, we can see the, the host is actually in there. So good news, good news. Um, so Let's take a look. It actually looks like we've got a couple already in use by the, the V-Switch. So there's, just looking for our 10 gig interfaces, that's a 10 gig interface. That's a 10 gig. That's still in use by the V-Switch, so that's good. So we'll just make sure that these guys are fully migrated. Um, We'll leave our, our VM kernel adapters for right now alone. Um, we will leave our VMs alone for right now. So I'll go ahead and uncheck that. We'll click finish. Uh-oh. Always got to be something. I wonder why... Yeah, it says the host. Oh. Let's see. Let's see what's going on. Actually, I'm going to go back to my ESXi host here. Oh, from an old lab. vCenter is not able because it's still in use to resolve this virtual. Oh, running into some first world lab problems here. Um, so let's look at... Let's go under here. Note to self, remove the DVS before you... Okay. So let's make sure those are proper. Okay. 
So now we'll go, let's go back to networking. Let's try, try to re-add this guy. That looks better. Um, and we'll go to, let's see if the hosts are showing up now. Okay, perfect. So now, I don't know, it was kind of a little snafu because of an old connection to a previous um, vSwitch. But now we can see the host is over there. If we look at the config, we can see that we have a couple of uplinks now within this new distributed virtual switch. So what we can do is <clears throat> verify that we can see our VMs. Let's see what we can see within ACI now, now that we're connected. So we'll look at vCenter, hypervisors. We see our ESXi host here. Let's see if we see the VMs. Okay, and we do. We can see the app VM the database VM as well as the web VM. Okay, so some pretty good insight into the, the actual virtual machine level, right? We can, we can see all these different hosts, even though these hosts aren't actually using um, the, the distributed virtual switch yet. Okay, they're just really hanging off there on an old standard V switch at this particular point in time. If we go over, and actually we're not gonna see them in any endpoint groups yet because we haven't created any endpoint groups. So really our next step, I guess, is to go ahead and create these EPGs. So what I've done is I've actually got a little map here of what I'd like to do. I'd like to create um, an army app EPG, database EPG. You guys have probably heard of that dreaded, um, what Cisco often refers to as the three-tiered app. Okay, that's what it is. We have database, app, and web. That's, that's the three-tiered app. Uh, and, and the theory behind it is that, you know, we'll provide database services to the application engine, and the application engine will provide data to the web engine. Okay, and then our, our consumers, right, Joe, uh, what they call Tom, Dick, and Harry, will come in and access the web server and be able to glean the information that they need uh, based on this three-tiered app. And we're only allowing communication between the three that, that's absolutely needed. Uh, in this case, we're going to leverage our any contract just to verify reachability. But we need to basically go in and create these three new EPGs first. That's really our first step. So let's go back over here, go back within... Um, our army tenant and we need to basically come in to our army app profile again we have application EPGs right so if we use a new application EPG and we try to let's call this um, army app actually let's do EPG app okay this is going to be within the army bridge domain and we're going to associate this to a virtual machine domain profile we'll say next uh, we will come in here and let's add this guy so we'll say vmware aci v switch uh, I, I like to deploy immediately uh, we're not going to be doing any micro segmentation right now so we'll just go ahead and click update okay we'll click finish and now we have a new app EPG. What's really cool is that if we go back here, notice now we have a new port group hanging off of our DVS. We've got this, you know, Army, Army app profile, Army EPG app. So as we create these, it's pushing them out based on that VM domain association all the way to VMware. So let's go ahead and create another one. We'll call this one Army. EPG database, bridge domain is going to be army BD, VM domain profile. We'll go ahead and add the ACI V switch, deploy immediately, and finish. And the last one, so is web, so we'll go ahead and create the third one. 
We'll call this army EPG web. We'll go ahead and use that bridge domain, associate to VM domain profile. Plus VMware vSwitch. Whoops, I didn't do immediate. Immediate, update, and finish. So now if we go back to vCenter, Notice we have app, DB, and web showing up in here now as our port groups off of this new DDS. So what's super, super cool, because our host is now associated to this vSwitch, we can go back over to hosts and clusters and basically move these guys off of the standard vSwitch. So I can say edit settings, and this is the app VM, so we want him to be in the app EPG. Okay? I don't know why it's doing that. Um, the database, we'll go ahead and say edit settings, network adapter, go to the database EPG, okay. and then the web, we will come in here and put in that web EPG, and boom goes the dynamite. So now they're all in the proper endpoint groups. We should again be able to verify that if I go to any of these guys and we look at operational. I should be able to see this guy pop up here. Let's give it a second. <clears throat> Come on, Smalls. I may have to generate some traffic. Let's let's open a console to this guy. Boom. Hopefully it's on. Let's take a look. IF config. 200.1. Let's make sure sometimes with these Ubuntu me machines, let me look at, okay, that's right. Sometimes it adds another one. You have to delete one. So let's go back over here and see if we're picking that guy up yet. We're still, let's see if we're picking any of these up. Nothing yet. So we'll give it a second here. Hmm, let's take a look at our leaves. Sometimes, sometimes you gotta get up in there. I don't know why it's acting like it doesn't want to connect. Let me stop this. Let's see, load, appearance, do 12. Save, open. Admin. Let's look at one seven. Make sure it's not suspended or anything crazy. <clears throat> yeah, it's showing up right now as out of service. So we've we've got a problem. So let's kind of backtrack and see what that problem could be. Um, and it might be. Let's go to.
make sure we associated this guy to the proper yeah see that's that's the problem it didn't take that oh wait it did take the AAP so we've got the AAP the VLAN pool So let's look back at our access policy. Global policy, AAP. Just kind of backtrack our work. So we see the VMM domain uh, is formed there. We see the 10 gig CDP, um, no LLDP policy applied. Um, if we go back to the interface, Oops, not the policies, the policy groups. Look at the no LLDP. We should see this guy. Yep, TX and RX off. AP. And then this should be applied to the proper switch profiles. So we'll look at 1.7. CDP no LLDP. And one seven. So all that looks pretty good. NTU. So a little inadvertent troubleshooting here. Make sure that V switch was set up for CDP again. Because we should be seeing those guys. Try this. Let's try CDP on. And let's try to force LDP off. Let's look at one seven again. Let's see if it comes up. The only other place I know to do this is through Fabric. And let's look at the AAP. I know you can modify the AAP. If we right click on it, the vSwitch policies. So let's try it from here. CDP on. Uh, use that. Let's see if that does it. And again, sorry for any confusion this may be adding, um, but what we're trying to do is force the system to use CDP rather than LLDP, and there's really only two places you can do that within ACI. That's under the... It's under the vSwitch itself, under the vSwitch policies, under the AAP, um, or it's within the, the actual VMware networking config that we see over here. So it looks like I have it set properly in both places now, but I'm still, for some reason, not getting... <clears throat> I 
not getting that port acting like it's up. So not really sure if that'll make a difference. Okay. Look at one seven again. Now it's up. I wonder if it was the firewall thing. Let's go back to the policy. Kind of and turn the firewall off. Let's let's see if that takes it out of service again. No, so it, it, it might have just taken it a minute to push out that CDP policy down to it because it's, it's up now. So if we go back to the real tests, if we can see the hosts within our EPGs. So let's go back over to our tenant. Location EPGs, we'll look at app. We should be able to see these guys. Yeah, so now we can see 201. Haven't picked up the IP address for that guy yet. And then the web, 202.1. You can see it's learning it through both ports, 1017 and 10217. So we are seeing uh, all of the VMs at this point. And again, um, the, the difference was it wasn't that, it wasn't that firewall uh, policy. It was um, underneath fabric and global policies where we get under our AAP. If you right click on that guy, you can set the vSwitch policies. So I did a config vSwitch policies and it brought up this portion here. And basically I, I just turned LLDP off and CDP on for the vSwitch. That, that, that was the game changer. It just took it a minute to propagate out. Um, and again, this is really only if you're running like the C-series servers. If you're just running traditional bare metal host, not non-UCS, non-P81 VIX, uh, you know, pre-224B, UCS manager release, that's when you have to worry about this. You, you don't have to worry about it if you're above 224B uh, in terms of UCS manager or if you're running like a VIC 1225. You, you don't have to worry about this. This is only a very specific use case. But now we can see our VMs. So if I go back over here and pull up the app VM, notice now he's able to ping his default gateway. If Looking at let me make this a little bit bigger. He is 200.1. So if I were to try to ping 201.1, which is a, a, another VM, notice that right now we, we don't have any connectivity. Okay, we don't have any connectivity. So looking back at this, um, I am on this guy. And actually, I'm trying to ping that guy. I'm on the app host. So right now, I have no connectivity between these two VMs, even though they're off the same distributed virtual switch. So um, what I need to do is I need to create or at least build this provider-consumer relationship between these three guys. Okay, And that's exactly what we're going to work to do right now. So what I'm going to do just using that any contract, let me close some of this out. So I'm going to go back into ACI and we will go to tenants and army. And if I go down to application network profile, I'm going to from database add a provided contract, any contract, from app, and this is going to look kind of messy but it should work, 
I'm going to add a consumed contract. So I'm going to consume any contract, but I'm also going to provide any contract. Again, it's, a, it's ugly. I don't call a lot of babies ugly, but this baby's going to be ugly. Uh, and then we'll go to web and add a consumed contract in the form of any contract. So just to show you how ugly this is and how not right it is, um, we're going to go down here to security policies. We'll go to contracts, any contract, and check this out. So what we're doing is from the EPG, so this is app, database, and web. So database is providing, okay? Um, app is consuming and providing, and then web is consuming. So we should have connectivity based on you know, we did reverse filter ports, allow both directions. We should have connectivity between all three of these nodes right now. So what I want to do is go back over here and again remember our IP addresses. We're, we're basically just 192.168.200.201 and 202.1. So I'll hop on to, let's hop onto the database host which is 201.1. Let's go here and I'm going to console in. We'll say if config. So he's 201.1. So let's ping 192.168.200.1. And we do get a response. And we'll ping 202.1. And we get a response. So again, it, this is kind of showing I'm not going to go to that other machine and test. But we do have full bi-directional communication right now between every one of these VMs residing on this particular ESXi host. Again, a big part of what, what we did here is we integrated with vCenter, we built a distributed virtual switch, we added these guys to the DVS based on, you know, basically EPG port groups, and then we, we discovered everything via the use of CDP from the leaf switches down to this ESXi host itself. Uh, and again, most of the time we're going to use LLDP as kind of the de facto standard here, but because of the specific UCS servers with the P81E VIC cards, uh, we weren't able to discover using LLDP, so we had to move all of the settings over to only use CDP and not to use LLDP at all towards those, those end hosts, basically these ESXi hosts. So in the end, right now, We've got all three of these guys communicating through three disparate EPGs. In the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to try to wrap all of this up by coming together and creating some unique contracts, only allowing ICMP, only allowing SSH, only allowing web between these three nodes. Okay? And it's going to be a much cleaner kind of contract provider consumer relationship than what you guys just witnessed. I just wanted to show you that once we got a contract in place, we had reachability. So in the next video, we'll kind of extend that and we'll create some more specific contracts and filters.